Hallelujah. All right, we'll go right into God's word. As our custom is, we start with taking our confession before we hear the word. Let's declare boldly, one, two, go. As I sit under the teaching of the word of God, I declare that my heart is a prepared ground to receive the living seed of the word of God. I am focused and do not permit any form of distraction or distortion. As the word comes forth, every need in my life is met. I receive revelation knowledge. I receive light for every dark area of my life. I receive the impartation of the spirit and grace of the word to be a doer. I pull down and destroy every stronghold and high thing in my mind that will challenge or oppose the truth of the word of God I hear. I receive and believe the word I hear today as the truth of God. This word bears fruit in my life a hundredfold, as God confirms the word with miracles, wonders, and signs in my life. Amen. Father, we are here again to be blessed by your word. Your word is you. For in the beginning was the word, and the words were with God, and the word was God. So as we hear this word, we are hearing you. Let your voice shake every wilderness. Amen. Let your voice cause every pregnancy, miracles, whatever we are pregnant of that has been delayed. Let your voice cause it to deliver. Amen. Let your voice divide the flames. Amen. The people who are confused, they receive clarity. Amen. Let your voice shake whatever that is a wilderness in our life. Amen. And let the beauty and the riches of that experience become our portion. Amen. And Lord, as I speak this morning, let only the Lord Jesus be heard. Amen. Let only him be seen. Amen. And let only him be glorified. Amen. In his mighty and matchless name, we have prayed and received. Amen. amen. And amen. amen. All right, briefly this morning, I want to speak to us on part two of Forever Young. Part one was explosive, right? Yes. I spoke mostly to young people. Can we give the Lord a clap of free amen? And this part two is focusing on maybe you're older and you just know that there's a void in your life. There's something you ought to be doing that you're not doing or you feel unfulfilled. And this, that's what this part two is all about. And I want you to keep an open heart because God brought you here, both physically and online to listen to the message that he has for you. So forever young, and many people are looking for ways to keep young. I mean, young and healthy is the obsession of a majority of the population of the world. And it's actually security they are looking for. And everybody should. Because the greatest fear of man is the fear of the unknown. I read in social sciences and we were taught that whatever you can predict, you can control. Whatever you can predict, you can control. So man wants a measure of stability in their life. Am I speaking for us here? Yes, but thank God for his word because in his word, he has supplied us with everything that we need. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3 said, According as his divine power has given, not will give, given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. So everything we need to live a godly life, a fulfilled life, God has given. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, according as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Verse 4 says, we get those all things that pertain to life and godliness in the knowledge. So where our knowledge stops is where our portion stops. That's why God said in Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed because they lack knowledge. Not the knowledge of the Harvard of this world. No, or the Oxford. No, knowledge about what he has written and made available for us. He said they are destroyed because they lack that dimension of knowledge. So to the extent I know of this thing the Lord is talking about that he has given us, it's to that extent that I will be a partaker of the divine nature. 
So I'll be living as a God on the earth. My life will be as heaven on earth. In my marriage, in my business, as I raise my children. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is what is called prosperity. You can be rich and not be prosperous. Abraham was a prosperous man. Uh, Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. God has, Abraham lived to be old. You know, read all the scriptures. You will never find anywhere they told you Abraham was sick. The Bible said he was old and well stricken in years. And God has blessed him in all things. Genesis 24, verse 1. God has, not something, so everything about him was blessed. And the Bible says he is our father. The father of faith. Look unto the rock from which we are, you are healed and the pit from which I dug you. Look unto Abraham, your father. So he set a pattern and an example for us. And how old? How old was he when he died? 175. When he was 75, he was telling God, ah, you see, all the things I've done, I'm old, like many of us are saying. Many of us are even 40, 60, 50. We think we are old. He didn't know that at that 75 was when his life was starting, that God had another 100 years to his life. I'm telling somebody, God has another 100 years to your life today. 100 years of blessing. 100 years of comfort. 100 years of peace. In the name of Jesus Christ. And he was never sick. From the time we started hearing, go and check the Bible, not one place. 175. His son, Isaac, surpassed that. You know when he died? 180. So we are from a lineage of godly longevity. Say amen. amen. I want to decree again, in case some didn't hear me, anyone under the cause or sentence of untimely death, that cause is annulled right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If it has been the pattern in your generation, family lineage, it is annulled right now. Amen. Untimely death, violent death, it is not your portion. Amen. The Bible says Abraham was full of days. All the patriarchs, they knew when they were going. All their children blessed them and waited for the chariot, the Uber, spiritual Uber called death, to come and take them to eternity. That is our portion. Amen. That is your portion. Amen. I'm not hearing a loud amen. amen. I'm, I'm telling you because I've passed all this church for six years. I've not buried anyone, old or young. So anyone under the sound of my voice, under the sentence of untimely death or violent death, it is annulled right now in Jesus' name. Amen. For you and your household in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So it is in the knowledge of what God has given us that our lives become heaven on earth. And it is that knowledge we want to see. I'm going to delve into this morning. So that there will be a performance. Because we can be praying, 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 praying. And we love prayer in Nigeria. And it's very good. We are praying church also. But prayer without the word is empty noise. Proverbs 28 verse 9. Says the prayer of he, he that turns his ear away from hearing the law, even his prayer is an abomination to God. So we use the light of the word of God to know what to pray about. So that we are praying in his will. And then God is committed to answer us. Psalm 36 verse 9. In your light, for with you is the fountain of life. And in your light, in God's light, we see light. So we want to, the God's light to shine on us so that we can see clearly. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. First John chapter 2 verse, 4, verse 12 to 14. That's our text. Forever young. I write unto you, before I read this, let me introduce John, the apostle, the beloved of the Lord. He's the only apostle we were told that the Lord Jesus loved. He liked others, he loved them, but he had an exceptional, you know, preference. I don't know why, you know. He just loved him. We can't explain. 
That's why he's the one he gave the revelation of Jesus Christ. He's the one that wrote the last book of the Bible, Revelation. If you want to understand intimacy with God, go and read everything John wrote. Because it's his own was how he knew Jesus. It was the fragrance of intimacy. That's how he knew Jesus. So if you want to be more intimate with Jesus, not just religion, read everything John the Apostle wrote. The Gospel of John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and the book of Revelation. So it's the one that God gave, that re the Lord Jesus gave the revelation of who he is. And I believe everything he writes, we should take seriously like every other book in the Bible. Am I right? All right. So he wrote here and gave us the three categories of people in the church. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. So, the first category, little children. Number two, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. The next category is fathers. The next one, I write to you, young men, because you overcome the wicked one. So, the last category young men. I write to you little children because you've known the father. Verse 14. I've written unto you fathers because you've known him that is from the beginning. I've written unto you young men because you are strong. The word of God abides in you. That's what makes you strong. That's what makes you a young man. The abiding of God's word. That's what makes you young. That's what gives you strength. The word of God abides in you, and because of that, you overcome the wicked. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. I want to announce to you that the day you cease to be young in God's eyes is the day that your shelf life on earth expires. That by being young is not in age, but in falling into this category. And that's why it's a dangerous thing to retire from life. Do you notice that in Nigeria, many pensioners start having affliction of diseases? Do you notice that? You know why? When they retired them from work, they retired from life. And when you retire from life, you declare yourself open to afflictions. There's one thing to be retired from work, and there's another, it's another thing to be retired from life. The way God meant us to live is to retire on our final day on the earth. No, no, not that. My, my dad just turned 80. This uh, turned 80 May 25th. When he turned 70, he started saying, ah, you know, we are old. You know, I said, Daddy, you're, I'm not going to pay for your hospital bill because you can use your mouth. To kill yourself. The Bible says death and life are in the power of what? Of the tongue. I said that you're just 70. You're just a young man. You're just starting life. When Abraham was your age, God has not even called him. So you have not started. He said, eh. I said yes. So stop saying that. He said, okay. He has entered 80. His father died at 79. So he crossed a mark. Are you getting what I'm saying? You're also crossing a mark in Jesus' name. Help him. We are not taking him to us. If, if he comes here now, you will think that it's my elder brother. Healthy, strong, still going to church. I taught him, I said, Daddy, don't say that. Don't retire from life. Yes, you've been retired as a lecturer, but don't retire from life. What you're, what you're saying matters. Death and life and the power of the tongue. It's a dangerous thing to be retired. When you retire from life, you become idle. Because there's no project. I mean, are you still here? God told Joshua when he was 110 years, he said there is much land to be conquered. You have not even done your assignment. 110. You, you are 70, 80, you think you're old. My friend, you're not old. You will remain forever young. Amen. In this service, God will impart to you the genes to be forever young. Amen. When you start being old in God's eyes, what you have announced to him, come and take me home. Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7. Are you still here? Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. 
Media, help me, please. We have to be fast. I need a lot. And the reason God wants to keep you young is that your assignment has not finished. Your assignment has not finished. And only young people can overcome the wicked one. That's the reason he wants to keep you. He has an interest in you being young. When I mean young, I mean alive and healthy. Draw me 34 verse 7. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. Moses, 120 years old. His eyes were not dim. That means he was not wearing glasses. I'm not saying wearing glasses is bad. I'm just giving you an example. His eyes were not dim. Ah, no, his natural force. They didn't obey. That means they didn't diminish. He was as strong as a fiddle. At 120. At 120. And the Bible says, we, we are in a better covenant than the one God had with them. Don't tell me that. But let me give you another one. Joshua chapter 14. Are you still here? Yes, sir. God is demolishing strongholds. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Joshua chapter 14 from verse 10 to verse 12. Joshua chapter 14 from verse 10 to verse 12. Now, this is Caleb. Caleb, you remember Caleb? He and Joshua, we are the two of the, out of the 12 spies sent to investigate the land of promise. Ten of them gave an evil report. Joshua and Caleb stood on their ground and said, we can take it. God said, okay, out of all these people of this generation, only the two of them shall see the promised land. Only two. So, when they now entered the promised land led by Joshua, look at what he said. Now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive. As he said, may God say something of longevity to you today. Amen. These 40 and 5 years, even since the, the Lord spoke this word unto Moses, while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now, lo, I am this day, Four score and five years, 85 years. He said, God gave me a promise when I was 40. Now, I'm 85. 45 years have passed. I'm coming to claim that promise. What did God tell him? Verse 11, 85 years or 85 years. Watch his comment. He said, as yet, I am strong this day. At 85, as I was in the day that Moses met, sent me. As my strength was then at 40, even so is my strength now. For war, that means I can go to war, but to go out and to come in. May the Lord renew your age. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. This was his comment. He said, the way it was 45 years ago, that means he was looking that way. He said, God kept me alive. God did it. My assignment this morning is to show you how to stay forever young. Not medically, I'm telling you, buy this book called the Bible. Buy the book called the Bible. Until you finish your assignment. Say, I'm strong. I'm not walking with walking stick. I'm not taking any drug. They are not carrying me up and down. No, I'm strong. Give me the mountain. Verse, the next verse. Please, verse 12. Say, therefore now give me mountain. At 85, if she wants to not climb out, possess it, go to war to possess it. At 85. So that's, that my strength is still the same. May you receive new strength from the Lord today. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, let me show you, because remember what I've said, it is the strong one, the young one that is of value to God. They are the people God uses to fight. And the ones you're not of value, I mean, we read that if you are, Kenneth E. Hagen, he said it. He said, many preachers, many people God called, die early. Because they are not in God's purpose. So what are you doing on earth? So God will just be waiting for when it seems that you are now closer to him. He will take you. So that he doesn't miss you. That's why many preachers die early. That's why many people also die early. These are, these are the secrets I want us to know. So that it's not just that we are living till full old age. We are being healthy, strong, doing something. We are not retired from life. David retired from battlefield. Second Samuel chapter 11, 1 to 2. The Bible says that at the time when kings went to war, David was lounging in the house. That's when he saw Bathsheba and caused trouble. 
if he went to war. If God gives you length of days, he has an assignment. It's not to lounge. Don't retire from life. If they retire you, don't retire yourself. Don't retire from life. Don't say you're old. Oh, I'm 50, I'm 60, I'm 70, I'm in days. No, there's still much land to be conquered. You will keep fighting to your last day on earth. There's still something to do for God. Nobody is too old for God to use. Nobody is too young for God to use. Somebody see here. And as long as you have value to God, he has an interest, he, God, has an interest in keeping you alive on it and in keeping you healthy. There are people that have no use to God. But as long as you have use to him, as I am now, I can't fall sick. Because I'm of so much use to him. I've made myself available to be so much. If I fall sick, who will preach? For six years now, I've never been sick. I just break down. Then I, I've never been sick. Ask people in church. I've preached. We've been in church for six years. This church, six years. I've only not preached. I think three times on a Sunday. Every other time I've preached, including Wednesday service, I've never been sick. Why? God has an interest in keeping me not just alive but healthy. And I'm just starting. So I want to tell you, you're also just starting. I didn't hear loud amen. There are four things I want you to know. How God keeps us forever young. Just four things. Number one, He satisfies our mouth with good things. Our testimonies are good. Though. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me my very soul shall shout hallelujah praise God for saving me no you can turn that Praise God for healing me. Praise God for helping me. Praise God for lifting me. Praise God for all he has done. The goodness of God will make you young. Amen. I'm telling you. And I'm praying for someone who has not had a testimony for a long time. You've not had everything just looks normal. May God give you a taste of his wonders today. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalm 103 verse 5. Psalm 103, verse 5. That's how God keeps us young. By his goodness, what he does. Look at what David wrote here. David said, God satisfies his mouth, his life, with what? Good things. It is not a crime for you to enjoy good things. God satisfies his mouth with good things, and because of that, his youth is renewed like the eagles. My God, his youth is renewed. He has more strength like the eagles. So he can mount up on wings and fly. Why? God satisfies his mouth with good things. May the Lord satisfy your mouth with good things today. Yeah. Whatever is that good thing, whatever it is that money cannot buy, that people cannot give, that can only come from God, that you don't know how to get, in the name of the Lord Jesus, receive that thing right now. Yeah. You know the story of Naomi and Ruth. Naomi, Naomi's husband left. He jacked bad. Jackpot is not bad. Just hear from God. Abraham also jacked bad. Abi? Yeah. But when Isaac wanted to jack bad, God told him no. So he's just hearing from God. That's the difference. So the man didn't hear from God and he moved. When he got there, he died. His two sons, his two sons died. 
So he was left with only, Naomi was left with only him, only her, and two daughter-in-laws. So she heard as she left that God has visited Bethlehem, that the famine has ceased. So she now went back. Two of them followed her. The first one, she begged them, ah, you people, I, I know you love me. I know you care for And that's how we should be with our mother-in-laws. May God give you such daughters-in-laws. I'm praying a bank that prayer. I say, may God give you such daughter-in-laws. In the name of Jesus Christ. Opa said, I will follow you. Ruth said the same thing. The mother told him, even if I have a child today, and they grow up, you can't marry them. May God also make you such a mother-in-law. That people are willing to leave their families to follow you, even at the death of your own. Are you getting what I'm saying? Then she told them, and Opa said, he told them, go back. And the first one, Opa, went back. Ruth said, I'm not going no. Anywhere you're going is where I'm going. In fact, where you're buried is the same place I'll be buried. The woman got tired, and she followed her, they went back. But when they went back, she now told her, you know, we don't have anything. When she came back, oh, Naomi is back. Naomi means pleasant. She said, don't call me Naomi. I went out empty. I am out full. I'm returning empty. That, when you don't listen to God, that's what happens. The same way Lot. You know, remember Lot? He went to Sodom, Sodom full with everything. He left there only with his two daughters. With whom he committed in sin. The difference is in hearing what God is saying. That's what makes the difference. So as he went, she went back, she said, started, he told Ruth, go to the field and start picking. Because in the land of Israel in those days, you are not permitted by the law of God to harvest everything in the field. So you harvest the main one and the edges, you leave for the poor and the desolate. Because the Bible says the poor you always have in the land. You must always have something to give to people. Start it. Don't start it when you're rich. You start it now. When you're rich, you won't be able to do it. And it's powerful because the Bible says, Psalm 41, when you live like that, there are certain afflictions that can come in your life. I don't want to go into that, but Psalm 41 is there from verse 1. So it was in that field that she met her husband, the Boaz, who eventually married her. Naomi gave her the strategy. Now, this is where I'm going. When Ruth gave birth, the Bible says that Naomi, the mother-in-law, she was not the one that gave birth to, but the joy made her to start lactating. Her own breast started running. And the Bible says she's the one that breastfed the baby. That's the, that, that means the coming of that baby, Obed, was a good thing that renewed her life to be like the youth. May God do the same for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So God makes us to stay forever young by satisfying our mouth, our life, with good things. And it shall be so with you in Jesus' name. Amen. The next way God makes us to stay young is by converting us to be like a little child. Very important. A little child. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3. Matthew chapter 18, verse 2. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. Please note this point. Number one, always ask God, Lord, satisfy. I pray that prayer, Psalm 103. Bless is the, blessed is the Lord that God. Um, how do, please go to Psalm 103. I, I just want us to demonstrate something now before we go to Matthew 18, 3. I pray it a lot. It's a, it's a Psalm of David. It's a secret. There are keys there. Psalm 103 from verse 1. I'll read from verse 1 to 5. I'll teach you how to, I'll, I'll show you practically how to demonstrate it. Your BP is returning to normal. Amen. A psalm of David. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. This is how I pray the prayer. Lord, bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless all that is within me. My brain blesses you. My heart blesses you. My arteries, they bless you. My stomach, my intestines, my thyroid, my spleen. You, my liver, my kidneys, my heart, everywhere, name them, the veins. Nothing in your body can bless God and be dysfunctional. You say, bless the Lord of my soul and all. That is God, David had that secret revealed to him by the Spirit of God. Everything, my brain, 
bless the Lord. My hands, bless, my muscles, my joints, bless the Lord. Everything that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2. So you pray that you can spend 30 minutes praying on this. I will, I will, I'm telling you, I'm betting you. You just watch how many times you'll be sick. It's not possible. Say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. When you stop thanking God, you become an increase. Your eyes will be on the things God has not done. And then your life will stagnate, start diminishing. But the thing, when you thank him, the more you thank him, it provokes God to do more. The more you thank him, it provokes him to do more. Ah, since this year, I've not had a miracle. Did you have last year? Thank him now. Remember what he has done. That's what he told Joshua. Go and bring the, the rock. Let it be a memorial. So that in case they forget. So you snap pictures. So that when those times come, you remember. Ah, Lord, I remember this picture. Oh, that one I celebrated my 60th. I thank you. You start thanking him. You have been so good. You took me to this. You took, did you get what I'm saying? Verse 3. Who for, and as you do this, he forgives, present tense, all your iniquities. Because if the iniquity is there, you can't hear our prayers. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. The Lord's hand is not shortened, nor his ears dull. But your iniquities have made his hand to be shortened. So you can't be in thanksgiving and your prayer will not be heard. He said, who, he forgives your iniquities as you do this. And then number two, he heals your diseases. Pastor, how does this happen? I don't know how it happens. I just know the result. Then look at the last one, verse 4. Then as you do this, he is the one who redeems your life from destruction. You are thanking him. They are plotting evil. He redeems you. You are thanking him. The plane is supposed to crash. He tells you not to go. You are thanking him. There is a danger that's going to go. He redeems you. From what? Every kind of destruction. Every kind of loss. Then he crowns you with what? Loving kindness. And what? Tender mercies. Now look at verse 6 there. Verse 5. We'll stop it there. Then uh, he satisfies your mouth. That he makes it rich in your mouth. Please pray this prayer. Every day. Let this be like the prayer of Jabez for you. And watch God do mighty things. And make you younger, healthier, and stronger. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can you give the Lord a louder amen? amen? The next way we stay young forever is that Matthew chapter 18 verse 3. To be converted and to be like a child. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3. Matthew chapter 18 verse 3. Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, that means surely. It is enough for him to say something. But when he puts verily, I better pay attention. Except you be converted and become as little children, not ch children, little children, you shall not enter the kingdom of heaven. So to become a little child, I have to go through a process of what? Conversion. Now, you know little children, one of the things you know about children is that they believe anything you tell them easily. I can tell uh, a little child, not a child though, a little child, I can tell who, okay, Ariana is, Ariana is in our class. I can tell Ariana, as I'm coming back today, I will buy you a private jet. Will she believe me? Yes. She doesn't think of impossibility. <laughs> So God said, this is your experience you've had of failures. Be converted and be like uh, Ariana. Three years or four years. That can believe me for everything. That when you read the Bible, you don't doubt. When you hear that I divided the Red Sea, you don't try to use your small mind to check it. Uh, 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 there's, a, there's, a, there's a preacher I listened to. He said something. He said, we are just discovering that this... Are you, uh, this our solar system is has much more stars, other planets, other solar systems, other things. We are just discovering it, but it has always been there. You know why? God doesn't care if you know you don't know. Without you, we still you still be God. He still be God. So you have to. Science is very is powerful, but very limited. Genuine scientists believe science to prove that there's the existence of god because they see how orderly the universe is how orderly 
human life is, the principles, the patterns, it convinces them to see that there is a creator behind the creation. That's why David said in Psalm 19, the earth declared the glory of the Lord and the heavens is permanent. Day unto day, they utter speech. There is no side of the earth where their voice is not heard. So even if you don't believe that there is God by our preaching, look at the things now. The sun, there's a particular distance he has to stay on the earth. Not to talk. If he comes too close, we can't stay here. Who made it like that? The earth is the only habitable planet. Who made it like that? It has seasons. The sun goes up and comes down. Does it make sense what I'm saying? So it's your self to be converted and be like a child in believing God. Another thing about children, they don't keep malice. Many of us, the things people, and this is one of the things that make us old. There's a research I was reading, they said, a lot of people, not everybody, but a lot of people that have arthritis, all these things, unforgiveness and bitterness. Children, you can beat a child now. The next moment you call them, they come and hug you. Tell them, say sorry. I'm sorry. That thing is what makes them young. That's what God is saying we should be. And the Lord Jesus said, except you be. So you have to start confession. Many of us, God has told us, go and apologize to this person. You're using style. No, he wants you to use your words. And go and say it. Keep in malice. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 30. He said, in understanding, be men. But in malice, be like little children. First Corinthians 14, 30. You have to learn it. You have to train yourself. You have to train yourself. God doesn't speak to people who keep malice. God's presence is not in the home of, home of people who keep malice. When you are thanking God, genuinely, thinking of what he has done, you don't have time to keep malice with what people have done to you because you will know that they don't have the power to do you anything because no man can receive anything except it's given to them from above. That what God has in store for you is so much. You know, many of us are not receiving the blessings of God because we are busy looking at what he has done for others and what people have done for us. And nobody moves forward looking backward. Your eyes are in front for a reason. To look forward and upward and not to look back. Lord's wife looked back. Luke chapter 17 verse 32 and became a pillar of salt. Stop looking at what people have done. I have a sister. They named her Nkedini Ruka. That means the one in the front is greater. I, I'm telling you now, let that name be your own prophecy today. Amen. Forgetting the things that are behind. Forgetting the things that are behind. And may your past not tie you down. Amen. Anyone tied down by any incident of their past, in the name of Jesus, be set free right now. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Are you being blessed? Yes, Give Jesus a big clap offering. So, the number two way we stay forever young is we are converted and be like a child. What converts us? The word of God. Jesus tells us to forgive. Ah, Peter said, if somebody does something 70 times 70, say forgive. Forgive them. Forgiveness is a decision. Well, forgiveness doesn't mean you put yourself in the situation that it happens again. Except the person repents and shows proof of repentance. But forgiveness means you don't wish them ill in your heart. You don't have resentment. You bless them. But that until they repent and you see the fruit, you are not permitted to go into fellowship with them. Do you understand that now? Not that somebody is killing you. You say you're forgiving. You go again. Jesus, they will kill you. It's not what I'm teaching. You forgive them. No fruit of repentance. You give your space. But you don't wish them ill. Saul, King Saul, was chasing David to kill him. If David had ought, God tested him twice. In fact, his armor told him, this is the day we've been praying for. You won't do it. Allow me just to do it. Just one strike. David said, don't try it. All. We don't get to where we are going like this. Why? Because in his heart, genuinely, he are forgiving, so he doesn't have malice. That's why God gave him secrets. That's why he called, God called him his beloved. That's why God swore an oath to him. Lot disappointed Abraham. Insulted him. Left. Abraham, the only war he fought, he went to war because of Lot. If he had not forgiven him, he wouldn't do that. Are you still here? Yes, 
My own is that I advance forgiveness to people before they offend me. Because I need to hear from God. And I need his presence. May the Lord re receive grace right now to forgive. Amen. Receive grace right now never to look back. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The third way that we stay forever young. I've mentioned this briefly and I'll mention it again. We do not retire from life. Always engage in a project. Stagnant waters think. Never come to a place that you have said, hey, now let me enjoy. Evil will come. Look at the story. I've given you the story of uh, David, 2 Samuel chapter 11, 1 to 2. Where F, he built his capital, and then the time kings went to war, he was relaxing. An idle man, an idle woman, is the devil's workshop. Always have a project that occupies your mind that you engaged in. Ah, Pastor, you know, I have a lot of time in my hands. No, find some, there's something God wants you to do. Either he's preparing you for a busier season or there's something you ought to be doing that you're not doing. Once you retire from life, you become a marked person for Satan, for sickness, and for evil. Noah, you remember the story of Noah? built an ark, obeyed God. Genesis chapter 9, I'll read from verse 20 to 21. Built an ark, obeyed God, such a man of faith. God came to give him information, I'm coming to destroy the earth, build an ark. Such a man of God. The ark, the, the, the whole world was destroyed. He only and his family, eight souls were saved. Then, when they came out from the ark, look at his mistake. Noah began to be an husband man and planted the vineyard. 21. He's, he relaxed. He retired. Uh, no, let me retire and enjoy life. 21. Verse 21. The next verse, please. Then he drank of that wine and became drunk and was uncovered in his tent. His son saw it, made fun of him. He woke up, caused that lineage. His retirement, he doesn't have anything engaging in his mind. Find something to engage your mind. I even tell people here in church, you don't have work, go and volunteer somewhere. Work for free. Holidays, put them. I, I, I told you of the book, Outliers. I read the book, Malcolm Gladwell. In that book, every prominent person, during holidays, the children don't play. They keep their mind busy. Sharp and busy. Sharp, engage them in something. You must be doing something. A living thing. You're moving. That's why right, you're doing something. That's what keeps you young. So don't retire from life. If you're not working now, find somewhere to go and volunteer. Or go out every day, do something. The Bible says, whatsoever your hands find to do, do it with what? All your might. Whatsoever your hand, as long as it's legitimate and legal, do it with all your might. Give your best. Promotion does not come from man. It doesn't come from east or west. God is the one that lifts up people and brings others down. The Bible says the diligent hand shall be a rule. The diligent is the diligent hand. If you like, pray. If you're not working, if you're retired, lounging, wasting your life, God will not bless you. They're deceiving you. You must do something. He blesses the works of our hands. Oh God, they're not paying me. Don't worry, he will pay you. He's a rewarder. Somebody getting something? Yes, sir. Give Jesus a big clap offering. One more point and we close. I've given you three reasons how to stay young. Number one, God satisfying you, your mouth with his goodness. Number two, be converted and be like a child. Number three, don't retire from life. And the last one, be a dweller in God's house. Be a dweller in God's house. That's what made Moses that at 120, his eyes did not dim. I told God, if I serve you and walk with a walking stick at old age, then your word is a lie because I'm serving you with my youth, with everything I have. I cannot have generational or terminal disease. He said, 
you shall serve me and I, God, will take away sickness from your midst. I cannot be sick of serving you, giving you everything. Being a dweller in your house is not possible. And that should be your own testimony. Amen. I want to hear a loud amen. amen. Psalm 92, verse 12 to 14. Be a dweller in God's house all the days of your life. Some people go to church when it's convenient. It's not a priority. Huh? You will not be God's priority. We go when you like. When it's convenient, we did about false worship and we said any worship that is convenient is false worship. Should, there are five of them. Psalm 92 verse 12 to 14. He says, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. You know, the palm tree, every part of it is useful. See, so that's how the righteous will be. And the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Massive tree. Useful tree. That grows and lives up to a thousand years. The cedar tree in Lebanon. Google it and research it and see what I'm saying. Verse 13. It's, then he said, those that are planted... That means every Sunday you are sure that they will sit on this chair. That means what was planted. They are involved. Those planted. I told my dad to be play, praying this prayer. Because since I know him, he has been planted in God's house. Those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall. It is mandatory. It's not a prayer point. Shall flourish inside the courts where decisions are made of life. Then verse 14. Those people, they will bring forth fruit even in their old age. Not that the uh, time of childbearing is past. Uh, you know, I'm old. No, they shall be productive in their old age. They want 20. They want any time you decide. They shall be productive. Mentally productive. Spiritually productive. Physically productive. Those are the, because they have become fathers. They are planted in God's house. They shall be productive, then they shall be fat. That means healthy. And their bodies flourishing. Why is that? The last verse, verse 15. I'll close it. Why is that? God is saying to show that God Himself is upright. God is saying, My reputation is at stake. To show that God is upright, He is my rock. And there is no righteousness with Him. They that are planted. Not come when you like, or when it's convenient. It's an insult to God, though. We've explained it that what we do Monday to Saturday is worship. What we do on Sunday is homecoming. Just like a father. Every father, during holidays, wants all his children, with the grandchildren, ready to come. That's what we do on Sunday. Homecoming service. We come to fellowship with the father, fellowship with each other. So when you don't come, ah! God will say, ah, are they taking my mercies for granted? Are they taking my grace for granted? This Monday to Saturday, who gave them strength? Who protected them? Who preserved them? Who shielded them? Are they messing me up? I'm looking forward to them. I invited them to come. They are doing what they like. Is that day you fix meeting? I'm not saying you shouldn't go to meeting. God first. I'm not saying you shouldn't go to God. God first. That's why he gave it as a law. The fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day. Jesus didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it. Remember the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. That means do my own first before you go to any other place you're going. They that are planted in God's house, God had made a vow that these are the kind of people that even in old age, they shall be fruitful, they shall be fat. That means healthy and flourishing. May this be your portion. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Have you been blessed today? Yes, sir. Now give Jesus a big clap offering if you have been blessed. <laughs> Amen. Can we stand to our feet as we celebrate the Lord Jesus one more time? Let's celebrate him with all our, everything we have. Let's just sing to him if you want to sing and just to worship him. Give him praise. Bless his holy name. Bless him. Lift up thanksgiving to your God, to your Father. This is a homecoming service. Thank Him. Bless His holy name. 
Rejoice in his mercy. Tell him, Father, I'm the one who returned with thanksgiving. I'm the one who come again to celebrate your mercies. I'm the one that you have helped. I can't go another week without registering my gratitude in your presence. So I thank you for making lines to fall for me in pleasant places. I thank you for help in the hard places. I thank you for remembering me. I thank you for lifting. I thank you for satisfying my mouth with good things. I thank you for renewing my youth. Thank him. Bless his holy name. Someone just let out blessings. Thanksgiving. Gratitude. Let it flow from your heart to him. Thank him for yourself, for your loved ones. Far and near. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. God has been good. Don't wait till something happens before you know how good God has been. Thank him now that you have the time. Just thank him. Just appreciate him. Appreciation leads to elevation. If you don't appreciate God, you will depreciate. Just thank him. Gratitude changes altitude. Thank him. He has done something for you. To keep you alive in the land of the living. To preserve you and your loved ones. To fight invisible battles. To satisfy your mouth with good things. Thank him. Give him praise. Bless his holy name. He's worthy to be praised. If that's the only thing you did in this service, is enough. Thank him. Lord, I am grateful. I am thankful. Lord, I declare that you have been good and merciful. Lord, I'm so grateful. If my whole body were to be my mouth, it would not be enough to thank you. I'm not ashamed to give you thanks. Now you're going to pray Psalm 103 verse 5. You're going to ask him, Lord, please today satisfy my mouth with good things. Now pray this prayer because God will answer it. It's like a bonus track. Lord, satisfy my mouth with good things. In the name of Jesus. I'm giving you the next two, three minutes. Pray to the Lord. Lord, satisfy my mouth with good things. David said, who satisfies my mouth with good things? And because of that, my life, my youth is renewed like the eagles. For that good thing may be healing, may be an accommodation, may be a job, may be marriage. I don't know what it is, but you know. Lord, satisfy my mouth with good things today. Oh, in your mercy, Lord. In a prayer for your child or a sibling, cry out to the Lord. The Lord is here. His ears are open. He told Moses, tell them as they are spoken to my ears, so I will do to them. Now speak to his ears. He will do it. His hand is not shortened. His hand is stretched forth. If it is healing, ask him right now. Because it will happen now. The Lord will do it. I'm standing here as his messenger. I'm standing here as his servant. He will do it. Satisfy my mouth with good things. The one that will make my, me younger. Make me stronger. Make me healthier. If it is a good job so that you can serve him better. Whatever it is, ask him right now. Alabadia. Is that the moko segete the abaco shegete de buzakai? Emolesianabos. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and received. For Anna, the good thing in her life was a son, a man child. And the man of God, Eli, the high priest, sitting in that office said to him, the God of Israel grant her that which he desired. I'm standing in that state as God's servant and in the name of the Lord Jesus, may the Lord grant to you that which you have prayed for. Amen. 
In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. The last thing I'll do before we close, all eyes closed, please, all heads bowed. You're here, you're not born again or listening online or watching online. But you want to rededicate your life to Christ. You know you've not lived right. Just say this prayer sincerely after me. Say it from your heart and speak it out and do it sincerely. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for my sins. On the third day, God raised you from the dead that I may be made right with him. Today, I confess you, Jesus, as Lord. Please cleanse me from all my sins. Thank you for giving me the nature and life of God. I confess you, Lord, as Lord, and receive you into my heart as my Savior. Amen. Father, as many who have prayed this prayer, thank you for your hand resting upon them and satisfying them with good things all the days of their lives. From today, the life they have received in you will make them desire that which is only godly and only good in your sight. In Jesus' mighty name. All eyes closed, please. There's somebody you have. All eyes closed, please. Somebody, a part of your body is related to the bone. It's paining you. Just put your right hand right there. It's been on for a while. But in the name of Jesus, be healed right now. Amen. Let sinews, let muscles, let ligaments come into that place right now. Amen. Let it be as God has made it. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, there's somebody you've not been at peace. Receive the peace of God that passes all understanding. Amen. Let this peace keep you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Someone you need to make a decision. God will speak to you clearly this week. Amen. Receive grace to be sensitive, not Amen. to miss that speaking. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord, we thank you. Lord, with it. somebody you're praying for a relation that is not close to you, somebody related to you, and God said, I will give you an answer of peace. Amen. And you will hear the news before this month runs out. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Now, can we just thank God? Can we just thank him? It's been a glorious service. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed and received. Amen. Have you been blessed this morning? Yes, Can we celebrate the Lord Jesus one more time? <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. Uh, Wednesday, our Wednesday services are online, 6 p.m. I will continue along these lines. And next Sunday, 6 p.m., the 7.30 a.m., 9.30 a.m., I'm teaching on how to redeem the time. Maybe you've lost time, you've lost things, how to redeem it practically. And you will see God confirm that word in your life. Amen. As you go, may every day of this week answer to his name. Amen. May the lines fall for you in pleasant places. Amen. May you receive a goodly heritage. Amen. Whoever that is being old, there are some people being old, they have been looking for it, fighting for it. Then there are people being old, they don't even know people are owing them. That means God told them to do something they have forgotten or they don't want to do. In the name of Jesus, this is the week of delivery. Amen. And it shall be untampered. Amen. It shall not be aborted. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We close in Hammon declaring Psalm 133 from verse 1 to verse 3. Let's declare together. Behold how good and how pleasant it is. For brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head, a round down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, as the dew of Hammon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For here in Hammon Christian Center, the Lord has commanded the blessing over us, even life forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy are with us all the days of our lives. We are dwelling in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore.
Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. I declare that only glorious things are spoken, written, and reported concerning you. Amen. Go in peace and return only with testimonies. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen.